talking about boson distributes and the PMF of boson is p power minus lambda, lambda power x by x factorial with x taking value 0, 1 to infinity and lambda the parameter takes any real positive number. So we look into computation of mean, variance and also the first two central and raw moments. Now regarding the derivation of mu3 dash, mu4 dash and mu3, mu4, so I'll send the, uh, uh, the notes or the derivation regarding these things and you try to obtain beta1, beta2, gamma1, gamma2. So I'll share some of the derivations, initial steps. You have to just differentiate them and try to obtain them. Now, uh, this is what we were doing based on the actual definition of raw moment. So, we used to compute the moments and by the MGF. So, that was this. And I had told you to derive the moments using the definition of moment and to obtain this. That's what also given as homework. So, we'll continue this. So, as I said, uh, I'll just send you the steps and then you can finish that. Now today we'll look into what called as the recurrence relations. There are quite a few relations between probabilities as well as say uh, the frequencies and then also moments. Two successive frequencies and then uh, we can talk about three successive moments. To the central moments. Now, now this will also help you to obtain your beta 1, beta 2 easily. So successive relation or recurrence relation between two probabilities. So we have derived this for binomial distribution, the same procedure. So whenever you want to derive the relation between two successive terms, you will take the first term as the value for x is equal to x and you will also look into the value x is equal to x minus 1, that is the previous one. So if you already know what is the probability that x takes x minus 1, then using this you can easily compute what is the probability that x will take x. So the method is just simple define both p of x is equal to x as well as x is equal to x minus 1 using the PMF and obtain the ratio simplify and then derive the expression for just p of x is equal to x. So we know the PMF, PMF is e power minus lambda, lambda power x divided by x factor. So if my x is taking the value small x, then the PMF will have the form e power minus lambda, lambda power x divided by x factorial. So you can take the heading recurrence relation between two successive probability terms. Recurrence relation between two successive probability terms. And similarly, if I say my x is taking the value x minus 1, then in the PMF in place of x, you will have x minus 1. So lambda power x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 factorial. So this is very easy. Now what we do is we divide 1 by 2. So if I consider p of x is equal to x divided by p of x is equal to x minus 1. So I'll have e power minus lambda, lambda power x by x factorial divided by e power minus lambda, lambda power x minus 1 by x minus 1 factor. So e power minus lambda get cancels. I have lambda power x and lambda power x minus 1, x factorial and x minus 1 factorial. So that can also be simplified. So I'll have lambda power x by x factorial into x minus 1 factorial divided by I'll have lambda x minus 1. So simplify. Now you can write this x factorial as x into x minus 1 factorial. So that x minus 1 factorial also get cancelled. And lambda power x minus 1 can be written as lambda power x into lambda power minus 1. So these also get cancelled. So we'll be left with 1 over x into lambda inverse, which can be written as lambda divided by x. 
first one over lambda inverse is lambda. So we started with p of x is equal to x divided by p of x is equal to x minus 1 and we have got lambda divided by x. Therefore, we can now say p of x is equal to x equals lambda by x into p of x equals x minus 1. So we were familiar with this because we used this relation in obtaining the probabilities in the practical class. So this is the derivation. It is very much easier. And if you want to obtain the relation between two frequencies, that is it and Berkeley, two successive frequency terms, then frequency terms are indicated as P of x is equal to x, and it is defined as n into P of x is equal to x, where n is the total frequency. So using this rule only, I can multiply both the sides by capital N. So we call this as equation 3. So if the question is derive an expression for recurrence relation between two probability terms, you will stop here. If the derivation is for two successive frequency, then after this step, so I have to start from defining p of x equals x, x minus 1, derive this, and then continue two more lines. Uh, you state the relation between frequency and the probability, multiply n on both the sides for the expression 3, and then you will get the required result. So this is what we already know. So we know that p of x is equal to x equals n into p of x is equal to x. Now multiplying by n on both sides of expression 3, we get n into p of x is equal to x is equal to lambda by x into p of x equals x minus 1 into n. So this n into p of x is equal to x becomes p of x is equal to x. We have lambda by x as it is. n into p of x equals x minus 1 becomes p of x is equal to x minus 1. So if you know the previous frequency, you can just obtain the next frequency by using the relation px is equal to lambda by x into px minus 1 and this both equation works for x is equal to 1 to 3 onwards for x is equal to 0 you have to obtain it by pmf so first probability has to be obtained by pmf only then you can use the relation because to start with some initial probability must be known since our x starts from 0 so p of x equals 0 is the initial one after computing p of x equals 0, compute n into p of x equals 0 to generate p of x equals 0 and then use this p of x equals 0 if you want the frequencies directly. Now, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to use only these rules in fitting or obtaining the probabilities and frequencies. You can use only the PMF or this relation or this. So you are the one who will be deciding that the practical examination as far as possible will not specify the methods to be used. But in the theory cases, the derivation could be asked in the examination paper. So these are the first two derivatives. Relation between two successive probability terms and two successive frequency terms. But Koli Bega. multiplying by n on both sides of 3. Aita, clear madla. This is important. Whenever you derive an expression, you have to write for what range of x the expression is valid. Next, recurrence relation between moments. So here we talk about the central moments. 
we know the definition of central moment okay so whenever we have the random variable x and its mean e of x then we define our central moment as expectation of x minus expectation of x whole to the power of r now we use the same here so we have the pmf uh mf is not required here actually sorry so pmf is p of x is equal to x equals e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial we know that e of x is equal to lambda for a poisson distribution so if i define the r central moment so this is expectation of x minus expectation of x whole to the power of r this will be expectation of x minus lambda whole to the power of r and we know the definition of expectation of g of x expectation of g of x is summation over x g of x into the pmf so this is our r central moment right now what we do is we try to derive the relationship between mu r minus 1 mu r plus 1 and mu r so r moment r minus 1 moment and r plus 1th moment so the definition is one and the same any r moment is e of x minus e of x whole to the power of r so this will be same as e of x minus e of x is lambda so i should get this or in terms of pmf you will have x minus lambda to the power of r minus 1 e power minus lambda lambda power x divided by x factorial now similarly if you want r plus one moment that is expectation of x minus lambda to the power of r plus one which is summation x minus lambda to the power of r plus one e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial so this is actually not required it is understood just by the definition of mu r if you replace r by r minus one in this expression you get this replace r by r plus 1 in this expression you get the same so this is not a step to be remembered now what we do is now we differentiate this so differentiating with respect to say lambda differentiating with respect to lambda we get d mu r by d lambda which is equal to derivative of this sum. So it's all the most frequently asked question because all other results are very easy. Deriving the mean or variance uh, and moments, you know, this, uh, even the MGF is easier in poson. So the most likely question, you know, could be this in the examination. Now we have to differentiate this with respect to lambda. But we have three functions involving lambda. Okay. So I'll apply the chain rule here. So first function into derivative of second function, and the second function into derivative of first function. So your first function will be the group of two functions, of a set of two functions. I have to differentiate this. Now, when you try and differentiate this, you will get you know the power to be r minus one here. So you will get your r minus one moment. And when you simplify the other two terms, it you know the power increases to r plus one. So there you get the r plus one moment. So this expression tells you how you can obtain the next moment when you actually know the previous two moments. Fine. And we already know that mu one is equal to zero, and the previous moment to that is mu naught. Now, any idea what is the value of mu zero? For any distribution, you will hear the moments matter of the first time only. Just put r equal zero. So when you put r equal zero, what do you get? One. Yes, get the total of e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial which is total probability therefore that is equal to one 
So for all distributions, mu zero is one, mu one is always zero. So we already know these two moments. So using these two, I can obtain mu two, I can obtain mu three, and so on. So that expression is now derived for a case where I have the arc central moment. I try and differentiate this. Apply chain rule, chain rule, and differentiate this. Mod prime mod. Derivative of sum is sum of derivatives, so you need not worry about that summation sign. So you can take this outside. X equals zero one. Then you will have derivative of the c power minus lambda, x minus lambda power r, c power minus lambda lambda power x, and this x is free of the derivative because we are differentiating with respect to lambda. So you can take that outside. So I have three functions. Now differentiate. So I'll keep two function as it is. Differentiate the third one, and you will continue like that. So I'll first keep this x minus lambda power r and e power minus lambda, and I'll differentiate this. So I'll get lambda power x. So since we are differentiating this with respect to lambda, derivative of x to the power of n is x into Correct. X power n with respect to x is n into x power n minus one. So in place of x we have lambda. In place of n we have x. Therefore, it is x into lambda power x minus one. Then plus. Now keep the next two function as it is and differentiate the third function lambda lambda power x. Then I have e power minus lambda. Derivative of e power minus lambda is e power minus lambda into minus one. Next, I'll keep e power minus lambda, lambda power x as it is, and I'll differentiate this. So I'll get r into x minus lambda power r minus one into derivative of this, which is minus one. So this is the simplified form of the derivative. Now split this sum and see what are the common things you observe here. Okay, so I have r minus one. And then here some terms are common. Okay, so I have one by x factorial. Now what are the common terms here? So have x minus lambda power r, e power minus lambda is common, and then lambda power x is common. So we are taking common terms in the first two terms here. So I'll have one by lambda, this lambda power minus one, and then I have x also, then minus one plus e power minus. R x minus lambda power R minus one e power minus lambda lambda power x. Let's see whether you are understood this step. Very well, ma. Now send this factorial inside and see what do you get. So I'll again simplify this. Now this term becomes x minus lambda by lambda. So you can take this lambda outside, and you have x minus lambda power r into x minus lambda. So I'll have one by lambda x minus lambda power r plus one e power minus lambda lambda power x minus Again, so I am sending that x factorial inside. So I'll have r into x minus lambda power r minus one e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial. I'll send the summation sign or split the sum. Sir, ido sir chain rule. Hey na? Sir, ido product rule matte hai. Sir, 
if you have f g into h functions and you are differentiating that with respect to x where f of x g of x h of x are the function then the derivative of 3 will be like say f g into derivative of h plus g h into derivative of f plus g h into derivative of H G H G H H F into derivative of G. The other function hung it condo more So keep two common, differentiate the third one. Next take other two, differentiate one. So more function to differentiate up with H one sala, F one sala, G one sala. In the other hung a product rule condo. You can actually derive this rule. It is very easy. See that. Uh, you know the product rule, right? So now take this fg as one function. So if fg is one function, like say u and v, now we know that this is derivative of u into v plus derivative of v into u, right? Now replace your uv and simplify this. So you have h derivative of fg by x plus u is fg derivative of v is h by x now what is derivative of fg so again you will apply the product rule here so when you apply the product rule you will get f into derivative of g plus g into derivative of f which becomes hg derivative of f plus fh derivative of g so which simplifies to this so fg derivative of h plus fh derivative of g plus gh derivative of f so this can be you know extended to multiple product of the functions so if you have say k functions then the same rule could be applied so keep k minus one product as it is differentiate one function so you have to look into all such possibilities so here it is called though one then are differentiate marvel so in the name we had x minus lambda power r e power minus lambda and lambda power x and i had taken this outside so these are the three functions so what we did i took these two as it is i differentiated lambda power x now we are differentiating with respect to lambda not with respect to x therefore now x is the constant here so it is like differentiating your x power n derivative of x power n is n into x power n minus 1 when you are differentiating with respect to x now similarly if you are differentiating with respect to lambda x becomes the power so i'll have x into lambda power x minus 1 next i have kept this and lambda x as the function constant and i'm differentiating this e power minus lambda derivative of e power minus lambda is e power minus lambda into minus 1 next i have taken these two as it is and I have differentiating this. Now x minus lambda power r again using the uh, rule power rule. So I'll have r into x minus lambda power r minus 1 into derivative of this. Now since we are differentiating with respect to lambda, x is constant. So I'll have 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. Now simplify this. So I have minus 1 and r, which becomes minus r, all the terms there. In the first two expression, I'm taking x minus lambda power r e power minus lambda lambda power x constant. So if I take lambda power x, I'll be left with x by lambda in the first term and minus 1 in the second term, which could be simplified into x minus lambda by lambda. So you have a power r into a, which becomes a power r plus 1. This lambda is taken outside, x factorial is sent inside. Now, expanding the sum, I'll have the constants will be taken outside now. x equals 0, 1 to infinity. x minus lambda power r plus 1 e power minus lambda, lambda power x by x factorial. That is the first term. And then minus r summation x equals 0, 1 to infinity x minus lambda power r minus 1 e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial so just by looking into the terms so we started with derivative of r moment which is d mu r by d lambda so that is equal to 1 by lambda now this is r plus 1 moment so mu r plus 1 
minus r into r minus 1 moment which is mu r minus 1. So, if I want mu r plus 1 that will be equal to derivative of mu r with respect to lambda plus r into mu r minus 1 whole multiplied by lambda. So, this is the relation recurrence relation between three successive moments r minus 1, r and r plus 1. So, if you know r minus 1 and r moment, you can easily obtain mu r plus 1. So, using this relation also, you can obtain mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, mu 4, beta 1, beta 2, gamma 1, gamma 2. Now, two questions are possible here. First one is derivation of the result. The second one is stating the result and deriving the moments, deriving mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, beta 1, gamma 1, etc. So, those could be two questions. So, let me verify the result. Lambda r mu r minus 1 d by d lambda mu r. Okay. Fine. So, this is the first part. So, if they say derive the uh, recurrence relation between moments, then you have to state mu r just differentiate that and simplify. So, if you have confusion, so again you can watch the video one or two times and then you will understand the steps clearly. Now, coming to the second part. So, second part is usually statement of the recurrence relation. So, you have to memorize this. Now, using this, you can obtain your the coming moments. Let me show how. So, we know that mu 0 is equal to 1 and mu 1 is equal to 0. So now my question is what is mu 2? If I want to obtain mu 2, I have to put r is equal to 1. So when I put r equals 1 in the expression, so I get mu 2 is equal to lambda into derivative of mu r. I'm putting r as 1. So it will be 1 into mu 2. So first write the expression, then substitute, then simplify. Is it fine now? So we have mu two is equal to lambda into derivative of mu one. What is mu one? Mu one is zero. So derivative of zero with respect to lambda is also zero plus one into mu zero mu 0 is 1, so I will get 1 into 1, which is lambda. So, if you remember, we had obtained variance, variance is mu 2, and we had variance is equal to lambda, so we have got mu 2 equals lambda. So, now I know what is mu 1, what is mu 2, what is mu 0. Now, using this, you can now obtain mu 3. If I want to obtain mu 3, I have to take r is equal to 2. Now put r is equal to 2 in the relation. So I get mu 3. Join back again. So I'll be taking up to 12. Am I look crazy? Now the potential continue might go there. So, I am putting r is equal to 2. So, I will get 2 plus 1, 3. Derivative of mu 2, 2 into 2 minus 1 is 1. So now, do the substitution. So, we get lambda. What is mu 2? Mu 2 is lambda. So, derivative of lambda with respect to lambda plus 2 into mu 1. Mu 1 is 0. And derivative of lambda with respect to lambda is 1. So, you get 1 plus 0, which is equal to lambda. So, you have mu 3 mu two agadala, sir. equal to lambda. Sir, mu 2, r minus 1. Hmm. Sir, really? Why? Sir, 2 into mu 1. 2 into mu 1. Mu, mu, one. mu 2 agadala, sir. Mu 2 in another Plus, sir. r 1 hakadra in lane bantha. Sorry, 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So it is mu 1. Sorry, na. Okay, sir. 
will have 2 into mu 1. Mu 1 is 0. So, 2 into 0 is 0. Derivative of lambda with respect to lambda is 1. So, we will get lambda into 1 plus 0, which is lambda. So, we got mu 3 also lambda. Now, we will see what happens to mu 4. Now, to obtain mu 4, I have to put r is equal to 3. So, when I put r equals 3, I get mu 4 is equal to lambda into d by d lambda mu 3 plus 3 into mu 2. So, this will be lambda into mu 3 is also lambda. So, derivative of lambda plus 3 mu 2. What is mu 2? Mu 2 is again lambda. So, when I simplify this, I get mu 4 is equal to lambda into 1 plus 3 lambda, which becomes 3 lambda square plus lambda. So, this is our mu 4. And keep it as it is or the simplified form. Now, try to obtain beta 1, beta 2. So, beta 1 is mu 3 square by mu 2 cube and beta 2 is mu 4 by mu 2 square. Mu 3 square. What is mu 3? Mu 3 is lambda. So, I have lambda square divided by mu 2 cube. Mu 2 is also lambda. So, I have lambda cube. So, you get beta 1 is equal to 1 by lambda. And similarly, beta 2 mu 4 lambda into 1 plus 3 lambda divided by mu 2 square, which is lambda square. So, this simplifies to 1 plus lambda, sorry, 1 by lambda plus 3. So, on lambda cancel out of that, split mardada, you will get 1 by lambda plus 3. So, this is your beta 2. So, what is the conclusion for boson? Beta 1 is 1 by lambda, which is always greater than 0. Because our lambda is always greater than 0, 1 over lambda is also always greater than 0. Therefore, Poisson distribution is always positively skewed. So, we had observed this, you know, in the very first class of Poisson. I had shown you various shapes of Poisson for different values of lambda. And we observe this. Now, this is the theoretical proof for that. And again, coming to the kurtosis, if you see the value of beta 2, beta 2 is 3 plus 1 by lambda. We know that lambda is greater than 0. So, 1 by lambda is always positive. 3 plus a positive number is always greater than 3. So, it implies the distribution is always leptokurtic. It indicates that the curve of the distribution will be always, you know, very sharp and the tail is stretched to this. Obviously, because our x is, you know, 0 to infinity, so this is the shape. So, here it is not a continuous distribution. What we mean is, if you draw a probability curve or a frequency curve after erecting the histograms for every value of x, you will observe the shape like that. So, that is the sense here. Of course, we are done with obtaining beta 1, beta 2. So, if you want to look into the value of gamma 1 and gamma 2, now gamma 1 is defined as square root of beta 1. So, this is square root of 1 by lambda, which is 1 by root lambda, or you can write it as lambda power minus half. And gamma 2 is beta 2 minus 3. So, it is 1 by lambda plus 3 minus 3, which is 1 by lambda. So, this gamma 2 is called as excess kurtosis. Kurtosis is always measured around 3. What is the excess after 3? So, again, you are getting a positive answer there. Therefore, we have positive skewness and left of kurtosis. Now you got the answer for all your moments. So mu 0 is equal to 1, mu 1 is equal to 0, mu 2 is equal to lambda, mu 3 is equal to lambda, mu 4 is equal to uh, 
lambda into 1 plus 3 lambda and then memorize beta 1 as well as beta 2 for this. Now we had some practical questions right? First practical of boson, there for a given value of lambda, you are asked to obtain the moments, tumors and kurtosis. So you have the formulas with you now, complete those questions of the practicals. Doubt it be correct, not a practical class in Adana, Nansala, Madana. Let's try to next day is there. Next day is more to domestic ideas. We have class at twelve. Sir, Sumar Jana connect actil vante sir. Maybe. Paragil. Paragil. I'll end here. I'll send the recording. Put koni ga error connect agila or note kolak kele. Let them derive using or prepare the notes using the video which I sent now. Okay, so this completes almost you know the poson distribution. In making my notes, Kalistini, are the last class of Lagda Madi Rodo, mu3 and mu4 derivation using the MGF, the new mark And then in the next class, I'll start with the next distribution, which is geometric distribution. Okay, no problem.